There were scores of first responders who rushed into danger on 9-11. Among them, retired FDNY Battalion Chief Joseph Pfeiffer. He was the first and highest ranking officer to arrive at Ground Zero that day. He had to make some tough decisions as well, really, that impacted his own family, not just his FDNY family. And he's recounting those harrowing moments in a new book. Pixelman's Anthony Lorenzo joining us live from Lower Manhattan with this interview. Anthony, good morning. Good morning to you, Bull. Of course, Chief Pfeiffer had to make some very difficult decisions that day that impacted both himself, his family, his brother, and thousands of other people on the ground, likely saving thousands of lives. Joining us this morning is Chief Pfeiffer. It is a pleasure to be with you this morning, and we are by your brother's name here at the South Reflecting Pool. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, take us back to that morning 20 years ago. Uh, you were just in Soho on a routine call, and then what happened? I was standing out in the street at a, a, a gas emergency, and then all of a sudden I heard a loud noise of a plane coming overhead. And in Manhattan, we never hear planes because of tall buildings. And I saw this plane race down the Hudson River at a low altitude. It disappeared behind some buildings, and then I saw the plane aim and crash into the World Trade Center. Were you able to make out any bit of that plane? It was flying so low that I could see the word American on the fuselage of the plane. And you can tell there's a documentary that you were featured in because there were filmmakers following you that day and they captured all of it on camera. It's remarkable the footage that they have and they were with you the entire time. Uh, you have a, a gentle uh, gentleness to your personality, a very deliberate, very calm. How did you stay so calm in those moments racing here to Ground Zero? It, it was not easy. Uh, um, dozens of thoughts were racing through my mind after I, I, I told the dispatcher that the, a plane just hit the building. But what I did, I slowed my thinking down to deliberate thinking of what do I have to do next? And after 60 seconds, I got on the radio again, and I said that we have a number of floors on fire, and it looked like the plane was aiming for the building. And then I trans transmitted a third alarm. Did you know at that moment that this was a terrorist attack, or did you think it was an accident? I knew right away that this was a terrorist attack, and that's why I said on the radio that the plane was aiming for the building. I wanted my firefighters to know that this was not an accident. So you and your firefighters get here just a few minutes later, you get to the ground level of the South Tower, and you immediately do what? I walk into the, to the North Tower, and I had to take command. And the plan was to evacuate the building and then we'll regroup on the upper floors to rescue those that were trapped. And one of the members that you met in the lobby was your own brother. Did you even know he was working that day? I thought my brother was off that day, but that morning, a little bit before nine o'clock, I saw him walk in and report to me. And he didn't say a word. For a few seconds, we just stood there and we wondered if each of us was going to be okay. And then I told my brother Kevin, as I told many other fire officers that day, to go up, to evacuate, and to rescue those that are in the building. And he slowly turned around. He took his unit, Engine 33, and that was the last time I saw my brother in Engine 33 and you were able to recover your brother's remains, what, in February of the next year? What was that call like for you? In February, actually, Super Bowl Sunday of 2002, I was called down to the site, and they discovered my brother. And we knew it was him because the bunker gear, the name Pfeiffer was on the belt, bunker gear. So, he was placed in a Stokes, and as they arrived, they had an American flag over his body. And myself, an engine 33 that was also called, we carried him out of the pit of ground zero to a waiting ambulance. And all of this is in your new book, Ordinary Heroes. Tell me uh, what's behind the title and the, and the impetus for writing this. The title, Ordinary Heroes, is what I saw that day. Our firefighters came in and they knew they were going to the most dangerous job of their life by seeing the burning towers. 
and they made a personal decision to, to come in. And as they climbed the narrow stairs, they told people, don't stop, you can make it out of here. Some simple words, but in an extraordinary time. And as my brother heard my evacuation to come down, he stopped on the ninth floor to redirect other people and other firefighters to a safer way out. Ordinary things, but at this incredible time in history, and that, therefore it just made sense to use the title Ordinary Heroes, because that's what I think of them every time I, I come down here to the memorial site. Well, it's an honor to be with you this morning right here on the South Tower, and we thank you so much for your service, and thank you for the extraordinary work of all the firefighters, the first responders that day. Thank you, Chief Pfeiffer, for being here with us this morning. And you can read more uh, in Chief Pfeiffer's book, Ordinary Heroes, which just was released this past Tuesday. Uh, the chief will be here tomorrow to mark the occasion of the 20th anniversary of 9-11. And then he says he'll be taking a walk on the beach with his wife at their home in Queens. Reporting live here in Lower Manhattan, I'm Anthony DiLorenzo, Pixel of the News. What? Incredible, incredible, incredible account right there from Chief Pfeiffer. I just want to give him a hug. I mean, I, I, to have him, first off, his book is out. You should read it. It's, gonna, it's mm -hmm. an amazing read. Um, but j just to hear him say that his own brother, he came in he had to, and it sent him, sent him up to rescue people. It was not an easy decision. And yeah. It was not an easy thing for and him to And when we hear these stories, from those telling it, it's like it was yesterday. They never forget. The memories are still raw. They're yeah. still very real.